Is it possible for Halo Infinite to get that popularity that it had at the start back again? Changes to the grapple shot, the return of Breakout, and when could we see the next Halo game? Why well, answer those questions and a lot more within this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So as I do regularly on my channel here, I go to my community page and ask you guys some questions of if you what you have for Halo Infinite. You guys certainly responded a lot, so I really appreciate the participation with this Q&A. So if you guys want to catch the next one, make sure you subscribe so you can have a chance to be added into the next video. SB asks the question, what do you think Halo needs to attract a big audience? He then continues on talking about how Halo Infinite had a hot start, but then really fell off. And we certainly saw that popularity at the beginning of Halo Infinite. People really wanted just like good, straightforward experience when it comes to Halo, and we got that. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me, isn't that the face of satisfaction right there and why give your money to the corporate overlords we can help out a small business so check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over and thank you very much Vite Ramen for sponsoring this video my problem is that the content flow after the launch just wasn't there and the game got stale really quick but to me this shows that there is still that interest in Halo by the gaming community at large so it's definitely possible for Halo to attract a big audience to come back to the game it just depends what kind of content really does that. Obviously a campaign does that very well, but we're not gonna be getting a campaign anytime soon according to the recent news about the Halo franchise switching over to the Unreal Engine, most likely meaning we'll get a new game, which we'll talk about later in this video. Though part of me also wonders if Halo actually can really do something like that, like get a large significant audience to continually come back and play the game. Yes, I think Halo Infinite started out great. I think the gameplay for Halo Infinite is great. We've seen Halo succeed in that way previously, but, the thing is, we saw that success like what, 15, 20 years ago. My biggest fear is that I don't know if Halo can ever retain a high player count because we've all played Halo. Like everyone who's a gamer knows what Halo is. So at one point or another, they've gone out and played the game and already made the determination if that style of gameplay of Halo is for them. Now that kind of brings into the question though, if you need to expand to a newer audience, how do you get that newer audience? Well, one way to do that for sure is to bring in that rumored Tatanka Battle Royale mode. As Battle Royale is still the most popular mode out there in the market people say it's dying it's not dying or going away anytime soon we've seen the rise of looter shooters kind of become a little bit more popular but nowhere near the popularity of what the current battle royale scene is so i think something like that or a whole new campaign would be the most for sure ways to bring people back into the game obviously we're not getting campaign anytime soon as the campaign was essentially gutted from 343, so that team's nowhere there. So I do think it's possible, but it might take some time. Biz Znack Zenia, if I pronounce it correctly, asks, do we ever think we'll see Breakout return to the game? And he does acknowledge that yes, there is like survivors and some limited life modes already in Halo Infinite, but they don't really hit the same as Breakout, which I would agree to some extent. Breakout, you had lower health, but not quite like how it was with SWAT as you used the pistol instead of a battle rifle. But also with Breakout, you had different types of weapon starts where all of Halo Infinite's game modes, except for SWAT and say Fiesta, are all just AR pistol starts. So that change in health and the different change when it comes to loadouts, like sometimes you had SMGs or shotguns, some with radar, some without radar, that makes a huge difference in how Halo actually plays. And so could there be a space for Breakout? Potentially, but I think what they really could do is try to revitalize some of these existing one life modes like attrition. I think you just kind of leave it as same uh, survivors, though. I think it's a little too similar to attrition. And the one way to make it a little stand out from what attrition is, is by making it more like breakout, which I think would be a cool aspect. I'll be honest, I haven't really touched survivors at all when it comes into the rotation because I just don't really find that style of game mode too enticing. I, mean, I did play breakout for a little bit it's a fun little diversion for your core halo experience but at breakout again i didn't really play a whole lot either but i think it was a underutilized game mode that people didn't really give a chance to appreciate i think it's because they saw the similarities of breakout to say like call of duty search and destroy and coming right off of halo 4 which was essentially a carbon copy of call of duty into halo 
that sentiment was certainly there within the community, which now it's certainly faded after Halo 5 and now with Halo Infinite, that we could see maybe more Call of Duty-like modes being brought into Halo. Longtime viewer of the channel, Peej, asked the question, any chance the harpoon technique will cause a small amount of damage in the future? If you guys don't know what a harpoon is, it's a metal within Halo Infinite, where if you use a grapple shot and you attach it to an enemy player and pull yourself to them, that's called a harpoon. Now, would it like to see it do some damage? Personally, I don't think so. That would be just like a weird point of damage that I just don't really think really fits in the Halo. I think it kind of takes away from the holy trinity of grenades, guns, and melee. It's so unpredictable already to anticipate who has a grapple shot. Like, yeah, you have like the little arm wristband to kind of showcase you have equipment, but in the middle of a gunfight, it's kind of tough to tell exactly what a person has. Though there is a significant change I would really like to see happen with the harpoon mechanic within Halo Infinite. And the main thing is that once you get that harpoon, you usually do an automatic melee. The thing is that once you do that harpoon technique and you actually go towards an enemy player, it doesn't automatic melee. So you have a sword, it's an instant kill. If you just hit a melee, it does a melee damage. If you hit it from the back for the melee, it's an instant kill. But the thing is with a gravity hammer, not so much because with the gravity hammer, if you harpoon somebody, what happens is that you'll do like the full swing animation with the gravity hammer, but it end up just being a regular melee. So if you actually want to have the effect of the full melee from a gravity hammer, what you need to do is harpoon them, drag yourself close enough, and then detach yourself in some way, probably double tapping Y, then pulling out the hammer again and then swinging it. You can see how much extra time that takes. It should just be a one hit melee with a gravity hammer. Because you have the one hit melee with a sword, why not do the same thing with that weapon? Douglas Armstrong asks, how long of a gap do you think we'll have between Halo Infinite and the hypothetical Halo 6 or 7 or wherever they want to call the next Halo game? This is playing off the recent news of hearing Halo switching over to the Unreal Engine, which would make a whole lot of sense. Again, this has not been confirmed. This is reported by Jason Schreier, who's a very credible insider when it comes to gaming news. Basically, whenever he says something, it's true. Now, I've seen some people talk about saying Halo Infinite switching over to Unreal, that's just not gonna happen. Halo Infinite's way in too deep when it comes to working with the Slip Space engine to completely stop work and then switch over to another engine would just delay work so much that we wouldn't begin any kind of content updates, we wouldn't begin any patch updates or anything. It'd be a monumental effort. Though that switch over to Unreal would make sense as 343 did essentially lose their campaign team. Their hands are tied right now by the Microsoft wide hiring freeze and apparently bringing on contractors takes at least six months of ramp up time for people. So their hands are really tied right now when it comes to making content. Now what's the best way to go about doing it? Stick with your proprietary engine, which probably would make sense maybe, but, but for the short term, if you need to put some content like a new campaign within the next like three or four years you probably need to do it within unreal because this hiring freeze and this upcoming recession that we're going to have is not going to be looking good for when it comes to anything happening for halo so how long would we have to wait until a new halo experience when it comes to a campaign uh at least three years from right now at this moment so i would say probably 2026 at the earliest we'll see a new campaign uh unless they find something to go absolutely insane and make it within two years but even that like we've still got a long time it really the only form of kind of story content we're going to get within the meantime is going to be through the seasonal storytelling for halo infinite which i would assume they probably put a bigger emphasis on because it's going to be like the only avenue of campaign narrative we'll have for halo but hey it, it is what it is right now when it comes to halo but if you want to know more stuff about the current leaks that are going on for the content that's been revealed for season four five and six well check out this video right here Thank you very much for watching and catch you on the next one. Peace out.